In Bravo Studio, everything should be inside a container. We also have two types of special container, the container top valve and the container slider. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to use sliders that are horizontal scrolls. With Blabla Studio, we have eight type. The default that has this effect. I'm going to show you each effect before starting the tutorial. This is scroll fade, the cube effect, the pager, parallax, rotate, zoom, and horizontal. So let's get started. So to create these slides, we are going to create a new frame. Select the frame and draw it inside our iPhone frame. Everything must be contained in a container. So this space that is above our horizontal scroller should be occupied. We are going to create another frame to occupy it and then assign the tag container. With our horizontal scroll frame, we are going to create another inside. So we are going to copy and paste and insert inside the first frame that we are going to call it uh, horizontal or with a slider called one for the inside frame. In the inside frame, we are going to create a rectangle. We'll center it and then we are going to make the boulder rounded. Now, with the card selected, we are going to duplicate. So we select this and drag with Alt and then duplicate again. So right now they are outside. So we select both of them and drag them into the slider. So right now we have three cards. Copy this to Bravo Studio and let's see the result. Oh, I forget the most important thing is to assign the container slider and the type of slider that we want. We start with default. In Bravo Studio, hit sync. And this is the result. For all the other effects, it's the same. You, you just need to change the last word default to one of those another like parallax, rotate, zoom to change the effect. Except for horizontal, that is a little different. On all sliders, when you drag a leader, it jump to another card. That means that on the screen, there will be only one card. If we will change the default to horizontal, and sync with Bravo Studio, then we long click on the screen to update with Bravo. We can see that we can show 
more than one card on the screen. That gave us the opportunity or the possibility to shrink our card and show more than one. So we are going to make the slider smaller. and duplicate the card. So we think with Bravo Studio and let's see. And here we have the final result of container slider horizontal. That definitely gave us more possibilities. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to use top bar. So we are going to change the container to container top bar, adding top bar keyword. Now we are also going to add text and change the color so you can see the difference. Uh, we are going to fill the color with black and add text inside. For example, title. Decrease the size and insert in the top bar. We are going to make this larger so we can scroll and you can see the top bar in function. And because we don't have more elements, we can still scroll. So we are going to add them. Make a copy of this. Like this. And then sync again. So now we can scroll and the container top bar is fixed. So to hide the top bar when we scroll, we just need to add scroll on top bar. So now when we scroll, we hide the top bar. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to use menu. We have three types of menu. So from Bravo Tag, we can see that we have menu tabs, menu slides, and menu model. In this example, we see how menu slide work. Now we are going to create also the others. Let's create the first type of menu, the tabs menu. So we are going to use a new frame that we are going to create a new frame at the bottom for the tabs. We are going to align this, create the same width and to create more easily, we are going to drag out. Now inside this, we are going to create also uh, frames. And inside those frames, we are going to create some icons or text like home. Then we are going to duplicate this frame to occupy okay good maybe the second one is about page and so on we drag this inside our new created frame we also want to change the background color so you can see them from the white background. Now we are going 
to change this to menu tabs menu tabs now let's sync with the blabber studio so this is our button tab right now it's not working to make it work we need to also add another screen we can do that easily by duplicating what we already have so we create another then we go to prototype select our menu tabs select the frame and drag to the screen that we want to link to so this one to the first and the second one to the second i drag it to the upper side so we can see more clearly to which screen it go now we are going to drag it it a, bit, a little so you can see that we are changing page so we are on the home now we go to about as you can see we are moving so we made it work in this lesson you are going to learn about modal pages we have four types of modal well the last one is only available for ios the first modal occupy the entire screen the 100% of the screen size. The second one is scrollable and uh, occupy a predefined number of percentage. So the model come out from the bottom and occupy what we define here in percentage number. And fixed model, which we define the size of the model and it's not scrollable now let's see them in action so let's create a new frame well we are going to add a text in the middle so we come back to design and add a text that's showing this is a model okay maybe we can make this bigger here we go maybe too big so we are going to make this smaller and uh, now we are going to change this to model and to do that we add the page page model and here we have the fixed one i mean the default that occupy the hundred percent uh, go to prototype uh, and to open it we drag this circle to the model and let's sync with the blabo so the model open in full screen mode so if we don't want to occupy the full screen but only the 30 percent we come back to our figma file and add a number like this 30 percent now our model when we open it occupy only the 30 percent and we can drag up to see the full content and then drag down to hide it if we, we don't want it to be scrollable we can make it fixed so instead of 30%, we make it fixed. And to only show the model at the bottom as fixed, we need to make it smaller. Okay, so now it is fixed. Now let's see how to add an intro to our application. We can add a intro which always which open every time when the final user open our application. That is more practical and more used the second one. Intro once when the 
Find a user download our application and open it for the first time, we show them a short introduction, so intro once. And to, clo to close the intro, we use the action close intro. So now we come back to our Figma file and add uh, another screen. In this screen, we are going to add some images. So I'm going to create a rectangle inside a frame. So here I'm going to drag a frame and define it as container. Contain. Con Container. Now we drag inside this image as our intro. Maybe on the, on the upper side we can add a text to our app. Then we also need add another frame, or you can use the frame that we have here. Uh, the file not as well is the same, but uh, this one we are going to use to create a button. Well, we are going to use to close the intro, so we are going to create an action that is this one Ac action close intro. And in the frame, we are going to define it as the intro. To do that, we need to use intro, otherwise if you want to always show the final user every time we open the application or once when the first time open it. So now let's sync with the Bell Studio and check the final result. So the first time that open to show the intro screen with an image, with the data we defined, and we can close with the button that we created. And now let's see some components that we can use in our application. The first one is video that is more use it uh, as background video or in the intro. That's because the video is without audio and the file must end in MP4. If we want to reproduce video, we need to use open video tag. Then we have GIF, Notifies, WebView. If we want to extend the text, if the text is formatted in Markdown or HTML, as we can see in this sample, if we want to upload a video, we can use AWS S3 to store it our video file. And here we have a link to use as example. So to this, we are going to create a new frame. And inside this frame, we are going to, and before we, we need to name this frame container. And inside this frame, we are going to add a rectangle. And with this rectangle, we are going to insert the video. And here we go. This is the result. This video is so audio, so you can use it as a final one if you want to create something like a, an e-learning platform where you offer a lot of video content. To do that, you need to open a video player or to play a video from YouTube. So if you want to play a video also with sound and also with sound, Autoplay, we need to use the action open video that also could be used to play YouTube videos that we are going to see when we uh, get to see uh, all the actions that we have to create uh, those functionalities. 
so for GIF, uh, we have to do more or less the same thing. We need to add a file that ends with GIF. For Lotify here, we can add easily from the Figma Lotify plugin. Just search for this plugin, search for the animation that you want, and uh, add them easily from the plugin. So we are going to jump to the next one, that is Web View. So now we are going to change the rectangle component video with this new one. We are going to call it component web view and the ur we also can get from API. Uh, so for this tutorial we are going to go basic. We add Google. So here we have Google inside this small web view. So the next one is Flexo that allow us to expand the container if the data that we get from API is too, uh, too long and occupy more than the space predefined. So it's very useful when you don't know how long the text is when you're getting it from an API. Then we have markdown and HTML text to format them if they are under this styling format. So here we have all the action tags that are very well explained in this example. So we have, for example, the button that open a YouTube video. Then we have another to open an email, the link to share this application or some information that we defined. We then can make call. And also we can open Google Maps. Then other actions that are not included in the samples are, for example, remote action that is only uh, that is not available in the free plan, and it's very useful to trigger an API request. Uh, then we have scan QR, download files, search and filter that we can see it in this example. For example, we search for the Julia car, it filter this card. Very useful. Just if you don't know all those examples, you can find them in Bravo Vision application. So we are going to exit the application and in our home page, we are going to those four dots. Here you can access all the samples that Blob Studio offer us to try and to test.